thank you for joining with us with Abiding in His Word. And again, I'm already came in ministry, excited about getting into the Word this morning and share with you the truth of God's Word, that if you listen to it and continue in it, Jesus says it will make you free. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, listen, you know our MO. We like to pray first, and we do pray first, but not, not only because we like it, because it's necessary so that we can bring the Holy Spirit into manifestation or acknowledge Him uh, so that when He comes into manifestation, praise God, we're ready to receive the engrafted Word, which is able to save our souls and make us whole in our thinking and our emotions. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the greater one who you have sent into this world to lead and guide us into the truth. It is the Holy Spirit. He's called the Spirit of Truth. And Father, we thank you that he is doing just that, and he will do just that as we get into your word this afternoon. We expect for him to give illumination to our hearts and understanding to our minds that we may walk in the light of your word, being doers of it. And as a result, we will be blessed and we will be made to be, be made free because we know and walk in the knowledge of the truth. It is the truth and the, and the, and the acknowledging of that truth and walking in the light of that truth that makes us free. So we thank you for it, Father. We rejoice and thank you for the Holy Spirit that will show us things to come because he's also called to do that as he recedes from the throne of God. As he recedes from the throne of God, he'll speak to us and show us things to come, as the scripture says. So we expect for him to do that. Now, Father, I thank you for him giving me utterance. As I open my mouth, I'll speak boldly as I ought to speak and make known the mysteries of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the hearers of the word, and they'll become doers of it, and they'll be blessed in all of their deeds. Now, Satan, we render you no it shall not hinder any person at the sound of my voice from hearing or receiving the word of God because I bind you in all of your works in the name of Jesus. And if you agree with that, just say amen where you at. Praise God. Now listen, I hope you've grabbed your iPhones, your tablets, your desktops or, you know, uh, laptops, whatever you have, grab them and get you even your paper Bible. I got my paper Bible and I really love my paper Bible. I like using it most of the time anyway, you know, unless I'm on the road or something like that or lying in bed and want to read. But uh, praise God, get the Bible so you can follow me in the word of God because it is the truth, God's word that makes us free. Amen. And uh, as I said once before, who's to say that my opinion, if I'm giving you my opinion on this broadcast is true and your opinion is wrong. So we need a higher ba a basis, a foundation of truth, in my opinion or your opinion. So we need the word of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Well, we've been teaching a lesson called Securing a Strong Foundation for Success in the Future. And man, praise God, last uh, broadcast on Monday uh, was just awesome that we did as I was getting into uh, the mechanics of the mechanics of building a strong foundation because it's one thing to know that this is the will of God to build a strong foundation for success in the future. And that's what we're doing when we're walking in obedience to God and we're renewing our minds with the word of God. Amen. Uh, the, the James says, uh, be ye doers of the word and not just hearers only. He turns around and said another scripture in saying one chapter one of the book of James, he says, um, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. And then the book of Proverbs says, my son, my daughter, in Proverbs the fourth, fourth chapter, verses 20 and 21, it says, my sons, my daughters, attend unto my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings, keep them before their eyes and in the midst of their heart because they are they are health or medicine to all your flesh. Amen? Amen? That's why, because the word of God is medicine. It's health to your flesh. Praise God. And so we want to do what God's word says to do so that we can build a foundation. We, we remember that we started off in Matthew, the 16th chapter, where Jesus spoke to Peter. When Peter spoke up, you know, just, I mean, quickly, not even thinking what he was going to say. And Jesus says, who do you say I am? He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus turned around and says, Simon Barjona, he says, Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And upon this rock I shall build my church. And so he's going to build his church. He's going to build up us who are the church collectively, individually. We are the body of Christ. He's going to build us up, the church, on the revelation knowledge of his will, of his word. Praise God. His word is his will. And so the Holy Spirit is what reveals that to us, the spirit of God. Okay, God revealed it to Peter, 
And then when the Holy Spirit was sent into the earth, he was sent to lead and guide us into the truth, to bring things to our remembrance, that Jesus speaks to us as we begin to meditate on the word, read the word, hear the word, and do the word. Praise, praise God. Excuse me. And we'll see this in this new part of our lesson we're going to teach on now. We looked at 1 Thessalonians, and we saw that Paul was writing to the Thessalonian believers in 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter, verse number 23. And he said to the believers, he says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. W-H-O-L-L-Y. That means the whole Shamir, the whole thing. And I pray God your whole, that means the, you know, the whole pie, the whole watermelon, and your whole spirit and soul and body. Now he's talking about each one of these individual parts of us because man is a tripart creation. Okay? The God is the creator, we are the creation. And he said he pray God that your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your whole body be preserved that is, to be kept up in, and reserved for personal or special use, to maintain or manage. Amen? That's what the word preserve, it means. He says, for personal use, preserve, uh, your whole body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that he's coming back. And uh, he's coming back for a glorious church. He's coming back to a church of whom he has poured his spirit out into. He sent his spirit. When he had descended upon high and on the right hand throne of God, then the Holy Spirit was sent into the earth. And that's why Jesus says, uh, says in the scriptures in the book of John, let me turn over there and read this to you. These are not in my notes, but this is what the Holy Spirit is giving me others for. He says in John, the 14th chapter and verse number 17, uh, well, let's start first. And I will pray the Father, verse number 16. Jesus said to the disciples, and I will pray the Father. I will pray to the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. Because Jesus was the comforter for the disciples and the apostles when he was on the earth. He shall give you another comforter. That he may, be, that he may abide with you forever. Glory be to God forevermore. And look at verse number 17. Even the spirit of truth. So the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth, as well as the paraclete, the intercessor, the standby, the strengthener, amen, the counselor. He has all those different attributes that is, is him. But here it says, but the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, the sinner cannot receive, the world cannot receive, excuse me, I'm scratching my back, <laughs> whom the world cannot receive, why? Because it seeth him not. The They don't see him. Why? Because if our gospel is hid, it is hid by the God of this world who blinds the minds of those that believe not on the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, lest they should be saved. So because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, you who? Those who are born again. For he dwelleth with you. Now he dwell with them in the, uh, uh, the New Old Testament. And when Jesus and the disciples, when the disciples on the earth, they were up under the Old Testament. Amen. And they were not born again. In other words, they were not born again into the body of Christ. So he was with them, just like the apostles, I mean, the prophets and the kings, okay, where the Spirit of God came upon them, not inside of them, and upon, upon them and enabled them. Samson, the Spirit of God came upon him, amen? And then others, where the Spirit of God came upon them. So he says right here, for he dwelleth with you and, and shall be in you. That is when we, they became born again. Now, there's another scripture, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And that's what he did to the apostles. You know, Matthews, Mark, Luke, and John um, and did to the apostle, uh, uh, to, did for the apostle Paul. You know, the Spirit of God brought the things to the, the disciples uh, when Jesus was on the earth, the t uh, to the, the eleven that were it was twelve of them, but you know Judas he lost his his position. But the eleven who were with Jesus, uh, it was the Holy Spirit that brought those things to their remembrance, and they wrote what we have in the gospel. Okay, so it says right here, and shall bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. 
And then there's another scripture over here in chapter 16, where it talks about the, the operation of the Holy Spirit. It says, he says, um, uh, nevertheless, I tell you the truth in verse number seven, that's 16, seven, I'm starting at the seventh seven verse. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient, necessary for you that I go away. For if I, for if, if I go not away, the comforter, the comforter, see, there's another name for the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. The Holy Spirit just wanted me to say this. The comforter means that he'll comfort your heart. He'll come, he, he's the comforter. In fact, the Bible says that God is the God of all comfort, and he comforts us through his spirit that dwelleth in us. Amen? He says, the comforter would not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove, convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of justice. I mean, uh, of judgment. All right? Now, you probably heard me pray, and some people I know they have, but they've been around me for any uh, length of time. And I pray, and I ask when I'm praying for sinners, you know, Lord, you know, my loved ones, you know, Lord, convict them, the Holy Spirit, convict them of sin and of righteousness and of judgment so that they can hear and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the gospel can be revealed unto them. <coughs> he says, of sin, because they believe not on me, verse 9, of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more, and of judgment, because the prince of this world, who's that? Satan, the God of this world, is judged already. So here we go. And look at verse number 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, oh, there he is again, the spirit of truth has come. When the spirit of truth has come, what is he going to do? He will guide you into all truth. Now listen, he's going to guide you into all truth by the truth, which is the word of God. Now those things that God has specifically <coughs> ordained for you, and when I teach a, teach a lesson, I teach a lesson on the vision that God has given me for my ministry, there's three predetermined purposes of God. There's the general predetermined purpose that we all come into conformity to the image of Christ. And then there's the exclusive predetermined purpose that we all be conformed, okay? That we all, that, that is the place where God has set us in the body of Christ. And this is what the Holy Spirit would do right here when it says that when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. That is the word of God. And then he'll guide you into the truth of concerning his purpose for you as a member of the body of Christ. Okay? You know, where he has set you in the body. Now there is the gift, the fivefold ministry gift that Jesus anoints people with. But there's other things, talents that's, that's inside of us. You know, talents that we have a, a, a bent towards in the inside of us as individual because we're all different, okay? And some people, they, you know, being a doctor or, you know, a nurse or being a lawyer or uh, being a business person, you know, one who runs a corporation, one who starts entrepreneur business, one who comes up with inventions and creativities and, and on and on and on and on. And these, these things that can be used for the kingdom of God, amen, for propagation of the gospel. Yes, they're, they're a blessing to society, they're a blessing to communities, they're a blessing to the state and the country they live in, okay? We didn't even need politicians. We need leaders of the country, politicians, congressmen, you know, uh, House of Representatives, you know, those in the Senate, those in the Supreme Court. We need judges. We need police officers for good because God has ordained them so that they can keep those apprehended or keep those straightened who will not only disobey the commandments of God's word, but also the laws of the land because we need laws in this land so we can live in a cohesive society. It's necessary. And some Christians, they buck up, buck, up, buck up against that which God has placed in authority in the natural realm. Did you know that? It's, it's a shame how Christians get away from the word of God because it's not their foundation of truth. The word of God has not taken preeminence in their lives. And I can go on and on, but I'm not talking about that. So here, the spirit of truth, he said, he will lead in guides in all truth. And then it says, but uh, for he shall not speak of himself, for whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so we see these things, the attributes of the Holy Spirit in, the, uh, in our lives. And so we talked about 
how do you maintain and keep up or manage your spirit, soul, and body? And we talked about how Paul has spoken. He says, I pray, God, that your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your body, and how the real you is a spirit man. And we substantiated that with different scriptures in the Bible, that you are a spirit, you have a soul. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't cover all of this extensively in the Bible. I, I could have. In fact, I'm fitting to do something now. <laughs> Ah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, I quoted to you some scriptures when I was I was teaching the other day on Monday, Monday evening. And uh, man, 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 I just remember the time frame I have here, but I'm just going to flow with the Holy Spirit. I um, think it's over in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians in your Bible. And we're looking at chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So don't quote me on that yet. Let me get there for a little bit. Yeah, that's where I'm going. Uh, we're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 16. And I, I mentioned this to you. I quoted it off, but I didn't show where it was at. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 16, it said, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perisheth, the in, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Who's the inward man? Well, that's the man on the inside. That's, that's you. That's the real you on the inside of your physical body. You are a spirit. You have a soul, and you live in a physical body. Now, there's another scripture I want to share with you in the Bible, and it's also chapter uh, 5 in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now, verse, verse chapter 4, verse 16 says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perishes, that means getting old, because when you get older, you're, if you're, 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 your outward man that is your flesh, it's dying. Now, death was never a part of God's creation. It came as a result of the fall of man, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden. Okay? When sin was conceived, death came forth as a result on everything on the earth. Sin is synonymous to Satan, and Satan is synonymous to death. Amen? The Bible talks about the law of sin and death, okay? And so the outward man perishes, the inward man is new day, day by day, and so the inward man is the spirit. Now look at verse chapter 15, and let's look at verse number 5. It says, Now he that has wrought or worked us for the selfsame thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest or the down payment of the spirit inside of us. That's what the Holy Spirit is, a foretaste of that which is to come. You know that song... Uh, air of salvation, oh, what a foretaste, you know. And they talk about the foretaste is the Holy Spirit that we have inside of us. Amen. Now it says, for, for in verse 30, uh, verse 6, therefore we are always confident knowing. Paul's talking about himself as well as to us, the Christians. He's writing to the Corinthian believers, but remember, the Bible is written to us. Therefore we are always confident knowing that while we're at home in the body, while, we, while we're at home in the body, while we're at home in the body, what does that mean? That means your body is just the temple that you live in. Know you not that your body is the temple of God? You are at home in your body on the earth. He says, while we're at home, and he said, therefore, we're always confident knowing this, that while we're at home in the body, listen, listen, read this. Look at the Bible. We are absent from the Lord. We're absent from the Lord. We're at home in the body on the earth, but we're absent from Christ Jesus, who is the head of the church, and we're a body of Christ, and we're one with Christ and one with God the Father. But right now, we're absent from Christ because we're on the earth in this physical body, therefore proving that you're a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a physical body. Let's go and read further. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, look at verse number 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body. Wait a minute, what are you talking about? He talk, is he suicidal? Is Paul got one of those pseudo-suicidal spirits? You know, they have some people, man, they have to put them in institutions because they said, well, they, they are suicidal. So we have to watch over them because you, ne you never know. They may, they may kill themselves. Now, I don't say this in humor because I've known of mothers where they tried to do it because of pressure, single mamas, mothers, 
or maybe even men or what have you, or children and stuff because of, 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 of a strong oppression in their mind, to mental mind that they attempt suicide because of all of the things that Satan brings upon them in this world, sin. And they have to be put, in, put, uh, put on watch, put in a cell, separated from anything that they can use to harm themselves. It's a serious thing, my brother and sister. Oh, man. So he said, therefore, in verse number six, therefore we are always confident knowing that while we're at home in the body, look at verse eight, but well, we are confident also in verse eight. We are confident, I, we are confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So your body and your spirit are not the same. Your body is just a temple that you live in. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. There's another place I want to go, and I think it is in Galatians. So let me find Galatians. And I'll give you the verse of Scripture when I get to Galatians, okay? Uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, um, am I right? Okay, 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 okay. I am in the fix between the two. Will the depart from the body that will be with the Lord? That's in Galatians, isn't it? Isn't that in Galatians? Uh, I'm in the fix between the two. Whether to remain in the body which is more needful for you. Okay. Where is that at? Bring it to my remembrance. Okay. Is that in Galatians? I am in a fix between the two, whether to remain in the body, which is more needful for you. Or is that over in Corinthians also? Are you looking it up for me? Are you trying to find it for me over there? Okay. Um, uh, just type in more needful for you and then you'll be able to find it quicker there than I am trying to turn to these pages because it's not coming to me at all and I believe the Spirit of God wants me to share that one ah praise the Lord Philippians, Philippians. I was Philippian what? Philippians, Philippians chapter one, one. chapter one. I it came in my spirit. Philippians, see this is what you got. Sometimes you got to just listen to the inward witness, and it, it came to me. Philippians, Philippians chapter one. Look at verse number twenty-one. Verse number twenty-one. Paul is writing, and we're still talking about what Paul says. He says that your whole spirit, soul, and body be be preserved. That is to be kept up, to be reserved for personal special use. Okay. Set apart for special use. You have to do that. And then <clears throat> it says to maintain or manage. To manage. Maintain your spirit. Maintain your soul. Maintain your body. Manage that. You have to do something with it. And what we're talking about building a strong foundation for success in the future. So we looked at that over in the second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, where Paul says, you know, while we're confident that we're present in the body, but we're absent from the Lord. So he says, we is the subject of the sentence, which means your spirit man, the real you. We means in Second Corinthians 5th chapter, we are, are, we are present in the body, but, we're, but we are absent from the Lord. The we is the spirit man, the inward man, the real you. That's what Paul was saying in Second Corinthians, the 5th chapter. Okay? Here in Philippians chapter 1, he says in verse one, number 21, he said, for to me, now Paul's talking about himself, but he's telling us, he's telling us because of the revelation that he understands that he is a tripart creation. He's a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in the physical body just like you. So he says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, what is your flesh? This right here. Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And that first word spirit is spelled with a capital S in verse number uh, chapter, uh, John 3, 6. And the second word, spirit, spirit is spelled with a lowercase s, talking about the man spirit. Holy Spirit, man spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. The spirit of God is the one that baptizes us into the body of Christ. Okay? 
Now he says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For if I live in the flesh, if I, the subject of the sentence, is Paul, who is a spirit, if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. What, what is the fruit of his labor? Being down here ministering to the saints of God. That's what I'm believing God for, that I remain in this body that uh, as long as necessary in my body so that I can minister to the body of Christ according to the gifting and the calling upon my life, to minister the revelation knowledge of God's word. That's my greatest desire is to feed God's flock the word of God. So he says, but I if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my body, yet what I shall choose I know not. So he was kind of like in a dilemma because he's gotten older in age and he had accomplished a lot of things through his apostleship, his, his calling. He says, for I am in a strait between two things, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, having a desire to depart and be with Christ. Not his body, because his body is going to be buried back in the grave. It's going to go down in the grave. Or they put it in caves back then. That's what they did their burial. They wrapped it up like a mummy. We put it in caskets. So your body remains on the earth. So he couldn't have been talking about his body. Are you getting this? Are you seeing the truth in God's word? That you're a spirit? You have a soul? You live in a physical body? I find ministers don't even know this truth. And it's unfortunate. So he says, For I am in a strait between the two, having a desire to depart to be with Christ, which is far better. The eye is talking about the spirit. Depart to be with Christ. Amen? Then he says in verse 24, Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Who? Oh. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about that because this, that's a deep thing in my heart concerning, you know, me, my family, the children, the grandchildren, as well as the church. Okay? So, we talked about that last week, and we, we then went down, we talked about how it was necessary. It says how what Paul talked about in the book of Ephesians, for he says in the book of Ephesians, uh, in Ephesians 3rd chapter, verse 19, that God would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So the spirit of God strengthens us, and how does he do that? He does that as we cooperate with him who dwells on the inside of us. And one thing, and that is, is praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. Many Christians are weak because they don't pray in the Spirit. They don't pray in tongues. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. And then there are those who are not filled with the Holy Spirit. They, they read the Word and stuff, and they love God. They're children of God, but they need that power on the inside of them, which is the Holy Spirit, that would enable them to be witnesses unto Jesus Christ. It would also enable them to be strengthened with all might by his Spirit that dwells in you, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus would have never told us, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, and this fake he of the Holy Spirit, that they that believe on him S-H-O-U-L-D should receive. You should receive. He said you should because it's according to your believing and your acting upon it. But sometimes, not sometimes, but this has happened. It can be because of the traditions of men, the traditions of your denomination, that they don't believe it that way because it's been passed down through generation to generation. So it's a custom. And Jesus says the tradition of men make the word of God ineffective. Or because a lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. My people destroy for lack of knowledge. Lack of information. So. So, so to be strengthened with all might by a spirit is you have to have the spirit of God in you. And the way you do that is praying in other tongues. We saw that in, in 2 Corinthians 12, 14, 4. He that is speaking in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, builds us up. We saw it in Jude one twenty. But you, beloved, building up yourselves, 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 building up you, 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 the real you, the, the spirit, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Faith is holy because faith comes from God, and God is holy. Glory be to God. Build up yourselves on your most holy faith. What? By how? By praying in the Holy Ghost. And then we talked about the, uh, uh, the praying in the spirit. Uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues where he'll show you things to come and, 
etc., etc., etc. Then he help you pray about things that you know not what you should pray for, as it says in Romans, the 8th chapter, and verse number 26 and verse number 27. 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered or articulated with our ordinary language. It's a heavenly language. 14, uh, 13 and 14, let him that speaketh in unknown tongue pray that he might interpret. What is then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing in the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. But I is the subject of the sentence, which is talking about the Spirit, man who's filled with the Holy Spirit. So you have to do the praying, and the Holy Spirit will give you the others. Now, we're going to talk about the soul. I'm a soul man. <laughs> Remember that song? That was, a, that was a secular song. That was a human, uh, human, inter, human created song out of their intellect, their mind. When we talk about the soul, we're talking about the mind, the will, and the emotions that, that stays with you when you leave your body. You know, we talked about the story of uh, the rich man who Lazarus, a poor man, sat at the, at the foot of his table, and the poor man Lazarus ate of the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. The rich man was so selfish he wouldn't even give Lazarus a plate with all that food he had. And by and by it says Lazarus died and the angels took his spirit over into Abraham's bosom which was a place called paradise reserved until Jesus came to the earth to fulfill the plan of redemption. That's where people went that believed in God's word, his commandments, walked in his precepts, his statutes, Old Testament commandments and laws. And any other person in the world that walked according to their consciousness in line with God's word or God's will. Okay? They had people that hadn't heard of, of, of the Ten Commandments, but they did things because of their, their consciousness of the nations. And God recognized that. And when they died, they went to paradise. That's a whole different teaching. My point is, so he took it, Lazarus to Abraham's bosom. Then the rich man died, and the Bible says he went to a place called Shoal, a place of torment. And while he was in there, there was a great void between Abraham's bosom and the place of Shoal where the people went who did not walk in the, the, the uh, Old Testament commandments of God's word or went contrary to their consciousness, okay? And they were in the place of torment, temporary place, but it was a place of torment, <laughs> And then, so that's the place they were. And so the rich man looked across the void and saw Lazarus, who was the one that was there to the crumbs of his table. And he cried out to Abraham, got the audacity, said, Abraham, Father Abraham. He says, have Lazarus dip his hand in a bucket of water and come over here and put it on my tongue because I am so tormented. Oh, look that scripture up so I can give him that scripture. And all of a sudden, Abraham spoke back over from the, ba the, the wide uh, uh, Chisholm you know, separation between uh, where he was at and the, uh, the rich man. And he says, he says, I can't. There's a great void between us. And not, we can't come over to that side and neither can anyone from that side come over here because God has put it, he has put it that way. Now, he's the creator, right? So who is the creator? Ain't it to try to tell the creator how, he to do, how he's supposed to do his works concerning his creation? And it wasn't, it wasn't God's will for the rich man to be over the place in torment. He had gave him this commandment. He disobeyed it. All right? But the God had a plan so that they would come to the place where they will they can't, they will, will hear the gospel of the salvation after Jesus Christ completed his redemptive work that he came to the earth to fulfill. So that all men from Adam to this present time right now who are born of with the endemic nature, sinful nature, can become born again. So nobody was out. Nobody will be without excuse, because Justin Wright is the God Almighty, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, and the Creator of man. He's Justin Wright. <laughs> Thank you, Father. But I want you to notice this. Is what I want you to notice that the rich man, his conscience, his his soul. His mind, will, and emotions were still intact with him when he cried out to Abraham because he wasn't down there in the place of torment with his physical body. That had been buried. Neither was Abraham. Neither was Lazarus. Their spirits had left their body. Same thing today. 
when you leave your body, your body goes down into the grave and it turns back to dust. I quoted last week at Ecclesiastic, I think it was 12.9 or 9.12, and it says the dust shall return to the earth from which, is, which, from which it came, and the spirit shall return to its creator. And I, I quoted it wrong when I was quoting to you last week and I listened to my messages. Let me make sure I give you the right scriptures. So my point is that your, your, your mind, your soul, your mind, will, and emotion, your, your soul goes with your spirit when you leave your body, when you die. When you cease to be, when you cease to dwell in your own physical body. Are you listening to me? Or have you gone home in the corner of your mind? Have you wandered off someplace else? Sometimes that'll happen because you gotta take hold of the lawns of your mind. Yeah, that's, that's Ecclesiastics 12, 9, 12, 12, 7, excuse me. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12, chapter, verse 7. Did you find that verse of scripture? Luke 16, 19 to 31. That is Luke 16, verse 19 to 21. 31. 31. 19 to 31. Luke 16, verse 19 to 31, that talks about the rich man and Lazarus. Okay? Now, Jesus says this was a parable. He said there was a real certain man, rich man, and there was a poor man, Lazarus. In other words, Jesus said this really happened. And you go back and read the scriptures. That wasn't a parable, as some people say. See, God wants to reveal truth to us to let you know his truth to set us free. That you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a physical body. And he wants us to know, to tell the sinner, that there is a hell to shun and there is a heaven to gain. Of course, during that time, that was Abraham's bosom because God had to make sure that there were those who did walk in their consciousness that did not have the Old Testament commandments like the children of Israel, but they did right by their consciousness. It says the very creation speaks about God, the existence of God. And the Indians and all the people on the other side of the, of, of the world where the gospel were, were the, uh, uh, the law of Moses hadn't been written. They didn't get that. So what did God do with them? He's a just God. He knows how to handle his business. That's a whole different teaching. I'm not trying to get into that, but I guess to give the Holy Spirit to lead me to say that so you can see that you are a spirit, you have a soul, and your spirit goes up to heaven now. Back then it went to Abraham's bosom because Jesus hadn't been crucified yet. But after his crucifixion, the Bible says he descended down and he led captivity captive. That's he was talking about in Abraham's bosom as well as in, in, in the place of show where the rich man was. And all of each side heard the gospel. They heard what Jesus did, his redemptive work. And he said, now if you believe on me, you can become, you can become born again and go up to heaven with me. Do you know what they did, the funds that was in hell? <laughs> they got born again, I bet you. Wow. <coughs> okay, let's get back to this. I, I want to say that. How did I get on that? The Holy Spirit. Somebody must need to hear this that's watching this program now or is going to be listening to it in the near future. So I fed it for that reason. So you have to do something. We have to do, well, we're spirit, right? So that shows us that we're spirit. We have a soul and we're living in the body. Let me read this out of uh, Ecclesiastes 12 out of the Bible. And I hope you turn there to look at it. So I told you to turn it so you know I'm speaking to you from the Bible. So Ecclesiastes 12, 12 chapter. It says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Okay? Now, I have in my book right here, Walking as a New Creation, I break this down, and I go to book, the book of Genesis and other chapters, you know, in the book of Numbers and other scriptures, some of them I shared today, that talks about man as a spirit, has a soul, lives in a physical body. And this book right here, so you want to get this book and it'll help you. And it'll go into more detail than what I'm just talking about now. Right now, I'm talking about building a strong foundation for success for the future. Or I'm teaching on that. Okay? Get this book, $15. Well worth the investment for you. Okay? All right. So, let's talk about the next part. Because Paul says, I pray, God, that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved, kept, maintained, managed, until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is soon to come. Soon to come. Boy. So we have to do something with our soul. 
We found out what we have to do with our spirit to keep our spirit built up, strong, bold in the spirit. That's why Christians are so weak. <coughs> and and, and they, they hardly tell people about Jesus. They're not bold and they walk around, you know, when they get among sinners. Instead of them getting the sinners conformed to the things of God, they conform to the sinner. And they have what they're talking about, they're talking about worldly things, they suck right in there. If sinners sit there and get, get, get caught up in anger and in the flesh and, you know, and, and cussing folks out and stuff, and if you have been biting, building yourself up, then you start cussing along with them. And you start doing the same thing along with them. And you think it's all right. Because you want to get along with people and stuff. You want to get along, you know, because, you know, maybe they'll, they'll see Christ in me. They ain't going to see Christ if you're out there cussing and lying like they are and committing fornication. And going to the places that they go to, you ain't gonna win them because they're gonna think you just one. You one of the boys. You one of the girls. <laughs> That's why we said sanctify. The scripture is sanctify. Be sanctified. Separate. Set yourself apart. Your whole spirit, soul, and body. You got to do something with it. And people may not like this, but this is the truth, and the truth that makes you free. Amen. The word of God chastens you also. He don't chasten you with sickness and disease. That's the devil's work. He instructs you and chastens you through the word. And when the word causes you to be, you know, causes you to be condemned in your spirit, then get right with it, man. Get rid of it. Lay aside those weights and sins that so easily beset you. So you can run the race that God has set before you. Being transformed and becoming conformed to the firstborn from the dead, the Lord Jesus Christ. To be, be transformed into the image of the firstborn, the Lord Jesus Christ. To be to, uh, to transformed or conformed to the image of his dear son. Praise God. I'm just checking my spirit to see if he wants to say anything else because I want to flow with the Holy Spirit and I did ask him to give me utterance. His utterance, not my utterance. Not what I think and what I feel, but what the Word of God says. Because it's the truth that's going to make you free. So, we're going to talk about the soul. I want you to turn with your Bible to the book of Proverbs, the 23rd chapter. Oh, man. I got a little bit of time, right? Turn to Proverbs, the 23rd chapter. Your soul. Let your soul be preserved, blameless. Let your soul be managed. Let your soul be separated for for uh, a specific use, that you be labors together with God, that you be God's, that you become God's workmanship, that your light may shine through your works, that your Father may be glorified in heaven. Your works, your good works, are done from your spirit in accordance with the word, not your good works that you think you should be doing. Feeding the hungry is good. But that's not all the works that God wants you to do. He wants you, while you're feeding the hungry, he wants you to have an attitude of feeding the hungry. He wants you to have a compassion. He wants you to have manifestation of the Spirit of God. When somebody hungry comes by and you see them with a limp or something, and you say, let me lay hands on you and pray for you. And you pray for them, and the supernatural power of God heals them in that food line. But you got to get your mind renewed to that truth. So, Proverbs 23, 7. Did I tell you to turn there? I'm going to read the first part of Proverbs 23, 7. Because this verse is scripture that was written by uh, Solomon. It has a twofold uh, instruction application for them in the Old Testament. But it has an application for us in the New Testament. So Proverbs 23, 7. 23, Proverbs 23, 7. Look at what it says in the first part of part A. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. That's talking about a man, you know, that he's sitting down there eating with you and drinking with you. And he's smiling at you and stuff, you know, and maybe telling jokes. But his heart, what's on the inside, what he thinks, is really not what's being manifest. In other words, he's being deceptive. Okay? And you find people like that today. But notice he says, for as he thinketh in his heart. So it's what's in the heart. 
That's why Jesus says, out of the heart proceedeth evil things. Out of your soul, your mind. Your, your soul is connected with your spirit. And we talked to the people back then. He was talking to the sinners when Jesus said that. But then the same thing applies today. What's in your heart? What, do you, what, do you, what is on your mind? How are you really thinking? Now, as Christians, we can be thinking the wrong thoughts. We can have revenge, unbelief, unforgiveness in our hearts or in our minds. Amen? And our spirit, our spirit is perfect. But it's our mind that has become renewed with the word of God so that our spirit and our minds can join up together. So, for as he thinketh in his heart, his soul, so is he. Now go to Philippians, the fourth chapter. Let's look at Philippians, the fourth chapter, and look at verse number eight. This is important. Oh, my, 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 my. Don't I know. The Lord has been dealing with me about this about a month ago because I was, I was coming into a, a transition to getting, being led to get to where God is leading me in my ministry now, praise God. And I had to, I had to, med I've been meditating upon this and confessing this. Now he says this in Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse number eight. He said, finally, brethren and sisters, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, knows what he says. He said, thank on these things. What you thinking? <laughs> what, are you, what are you thinking? A little humor right there. He said, think on these things. So we have to take each one of these things, eight of them, and we have to we have to we have to compare our thinking at all times whether or not they line up to what God says that we're supposed to be thinking on. What is true? Jesus said, Father, sanctify them with the truth. Thy word is truth. So we should be thinking on the word. That's why it says in the book of, of uh, Joshua 1 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there and day and night. Meditate, think on the word day and night. You say, I can't do that. Yes, you can. You think on, you worry about things day and night. When you worry, you're thinking on the things. When you be worrying about the tests and trials and problems and situations, you be thinking about it day and night. You go to work thinking about it. You drive in your car thinking about it. You working on your job and you're still coming to your mind. Yeah, the, it, it, it'll be over there about, about your job. And sometimes you think about it so heavily that you end up making a mistake on your job. And then you get back in your car driving home and you're driving home and you're thinking, I know, I've been there. I've been there, done that. And I would show, me, show you my T-shirt, but I, I, I burnt it up. Then you get home and you eat or what have you, talking to somebody on the phone. But you still got that inside of you. Most of the time you talk to other people about the problem. What are you doing? You're meditating upon it. You're thinking on it both day and night. Then you go to bed. And you can't get to sleep until about an hour or 15 minutes later. Why? Because you're meditating upon it. You're keeping it before your eyes. So you can't control your thinking. That's why it says in the book of Proverbs, in the 48 chapters, that thou will keep the 28th chapter... Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. I think it's the 26th chapter, Isaiah the 26th chapter. I do that because I want to make sure I'm giving you the right scriptures. I want to... 30 what? 26, 3. 26th chapter and verse number 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. Proverbs 26, 3. How do you keep your mind on God? How do you stay your mind on God? Isaiah 26. How do you keep your mind on God? You keep your mind on the Word. So whatsoever things are true. The Word is true. Jesus said, Father, sanctify them with the truth. Thy Word is true. 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 Not a lie. It has no contradictions in it whatsoever. This may be a misconstruing of the scriptures, and I've seen it done. 
I seen it done. In fact, I'm whatsoever things are true. Then whatsoever things are honest. Is it honest? I mean, is it honest? I mean, is it twisted? You know, like, you know, how many how many did you have in the service? Oh man, we had a we had a landslide. Boy, we had it packed out in the service. <laughs> and the place you had them at, it wasn't no bigger. It, do, it wasn't big enough to get even 10 people in or 15 people in, you know? And you you acting like you had, a, you know, about 100 or 2,000 people in there. Well, it was honest. It was packed out, but it wasn't because it can, it can only receive so many people. So that wasn't, that was, that was dishonest, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. So what sort of things are honest and what sort of things are just? Things are just. What is justice? Justice is not just looking to things according to their appearance. Not just looking things according to the flesh. You know, when you're going to be just. You know, the Bible says just and right is God. Because God, he, he doesn't look at the outward things as we do. Like when David, when, 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 when uh, um, uh, Elijah went to find the prophet of the next king of Israel. And he, and he went to Jesse because he had all these sons. And he went down the line, you know. He saw one of the sons that was tall and handsome. handsome. And he says, surely this got to be the next anointed king of Israel. This got to be the one. Look at this, bro. Look at him. Sharp, tall, and handsome. Well, uh, well, uh, well articulate, you know. Persuasive in his language and his 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 conversation, his speech, all these things from the outside, the prophet was looking at. And he the guy said, "No, it ain't him." What? You got to be God. You got to be missing it now. God says, "No." He said, "Because God doesn't look like look as man sees. God doesn't see as man sees, but God looks at the heart." So the prophet said, "Don't you have any other kids? You have any other sons here?" And Jay said, well, yeah, we got this old rugged, you know, short, rugged-looking, you know, son. He's the a, he's a youngest, and he's out there tending the sheep. That's all he's able to do. And he brought David in and stuff, and all of a sudden, the Spirit of God hit the prophet. Whoop! Oh, da chandala pakala, yo tia lo buba. This is the one, this is the one. And David was anointed for king. And when he got out there on the battlefield, you found out how, didn't you? Because David was always talking about God. He says, I come against you, come against me with sword and shield, but I come against you in the, in, uh, in, in the, I come to against you in the God of Abraham, the God of the armies of Israel. Anyway, so honest, just, what sort of things are pure, pure things, pure things, looking for the good, pure things always agreeing with that which is in line with God's righteousness and God's holiness and God's love and God's forgiveness and God's forbearance. Pure. What sort of things are lovely? Things that are lovely. You know? What sort of things are good reports? Oh, I want to hear good reports. I don't want to hear no gospel. I want to hear about bad things about some other brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. I want to hear good things. Don't bring no gossiping about somebody's failure, how they missed it. I don't want to hear that. You're not supposed to be talking about that anyway. The Bible said we're supposed to restore one another who has fallen to the side. Then he says that there be any virtue. That's, that's moral. Moral uprightness. Morality. Whether somebody's looking or whether somebody's not looking. You think I'm being, I'm, I'm always check myself when I'm out there in the world, how I live. You know, if I go out of town and my wife wife is not with me, I don't care how beautiful she may look, I ain't gonna yield myself to her. You know why? Because I have morals, I have virtue, and I love my wife. And I think about that. It may be tempting to the flesh, but I'm not gonna violate my morality. I'm gonna walk in my virtueness. I'm I'm gonna do the right thing, whether nobody see me or not. Love her. Think about what how it would hurt her. 
how much it would have hurt her and how she killed me if she found out. <laughs> Praise God. So, and then if there be any praise, things that bring praise, the good things of God. I love that. He says, think on these things. So this is what we're supposed to do with our soul. And this is the verse of scripture. It's an instruction in righteousness, instructions in doing things the way God wants things to be done. You need to read this and meditate upon it. We're talking about maintaining, managing, keeping our soul preserved until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's look at another scripture and go, oh, I can't, I can't. Oh, I, I, I would, but I could. Because I started at 12.30, right? Oh, man, I went, you know, I, both, I was going to go a half an hour on, on Wednesday and stuff, you know, but this, I'm led by the Holy Spirit. Listen, I'm going to have to quit. I have some other scriptures I'm going to give you. We'll get back on this about the soul, how we're supposed to manage and keep and maintain our souls, preserve our souls and stuff. That means to maintain, you know, uh, for personal use for the kingdom of God and for God the Father. Okay? Listen, there may be those of you that are watching this program who have not come into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, this is what this is all about. This is not about being religious. This is about having a personal relationship with God the Father, the creator of all man, and his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus said when he was on the earth, and he had it written in the scriptures when he inspired John the writer, he says, except a man be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God, you cannot understand the things of the kingdom of God. And that's why some of the things I've been teaching on, you've been listening, you don't understand what I'm talking about. But you do know what I'm talking about now. Because the Spirit of God is dealing with your heart. And that's why you were led to tune into this broadcast. That you must be born again. You see, the reason when, when you were born into this world, you were born with your mother and father's nature. It's called the Adamic nature. That is the Adam-like nature and Eve's nature, who were the first man and woman who were made in, on the earth. And because we're descendants of Adam and Eve, every human being is made, comes through one bloodline. That's, therefore, there's no, there's, there's nothing, there's no, there's, uh, there's no such thing as racist. Only one race, the human race, which started with Adam and Eve. And the Bible t shows us this. And the Bible says, through one man's transgression, one man's disobedience, Adam, death passed upon all men. Because we come down from the genealogy of Adam and Eve's uh, seed. Therefore, Jesus says you must be born again. Because when you're born into this world, you are born to sin. The book of Proverbs, the sixth chapter, says there is none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All are born into sin. That's why it says in the scriptures in John, the uh, fifth chapter, it says that God commended his love toward us, that while uh, God commended his love toward us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for the ungodly. He already paid the price for your ungodliness, for, your, for you being a sinner. And he did it so that you can become born again. Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells us this. It said that if thou would confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, which he was, you will be saved. For with your heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. What am I believing? I'm believing that Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, that he died, and he was buried in the earth for three days and three nights to pay the penalty for Adam and Eve's transgression. And when justice had been met, he was raised from the dead, because he was your and my substitute. And when he went up into heaven, he took his blood across to the, to the Holy of Holies and he poured it across the mercy seat for the remission, the wiping away of all sin that you ever did on the earth, as well as Adam and Eve. He covered it with his blood. If you would receive what he did for you, you will become born again. Will you pray this prayer with me? Not just to ape and imitate me, but pray it because you believe it in your heart. Say these words with me. Say, Dear God, I come to you now. As a sinner, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son, that he came to the earth and was crucified on the cross for sin, that he died and was buried in the earth for three days and three nights. And I believe that on the third day, you raised Jesus from the dead so I could be saved. I accept what Jesus Christ did for me. 
I accept him now as my Lord and my Savior. And because I believe this in my heart and I've confessed with my mouth, I am now saved. I am born again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for saving me. Amen. Praise God. And the reason why I'm clapping my hands so enthusiastically because the Bible says the angels of heaven are rejoicing over one sinner who has repented. They have a party for you in heaven. And we just crashed the party. That's all. Now, I have a book in my hand called The New Birth. I want to get it to your hands. Those of you who just got born again, all you got to do is call the telephone number at the end of this broadcast or on the comment line on Facebook, on the video broadcast that will come out later. You'll find it on the screen. That telephone number is going to be 810-407-8584. Call and get this book and let us know you got born again and we'll send it to you in the mail free of charge. I have another book called Walking as a New Creation After Receiving Eternal Life. This book here is $15. You should buy this book, especially those who are born again already, want to become a, have a deeper walk with Christ, want to become more rooted in your new birth, your, your new creation reality. When you said you got born again, you want to get this book, okay? So call and ask for this book, and we'll get to send this book to you in the mail for $15, okay? Now, I want to thank you for joining this broadcast of R.M. Heyman Ministries, Abiding in His Word. I want to remember find you that uh, John, the 15th chapter, verse number 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done to you. God bless you. We'll see you.